Good morning, I want to welcome you to Ragnarok Church this morning. Welcome to our YouTube channel, RRCC TV. It's great to have you with us. Uh, we're going to be worshipping and praising God together in a moment. And we're also going to be listening uh, to a word of God from John Grant. John Grant is a great friend of Raglan Road. He's the coordinator of Love Samuel that brings the churches together uh, regularly and we thank uh, God for him. He's also the associate pastor of uh, Bethel Leadham Church in Albury and he's also the chief exec of a fantastic youth work charity called Crunch that's serving some of our most vulnerable young people in the borough and we're grateful to him, grateful that he's with us and grateful he's going to share God's word to us. He's going to be helping us as we uh, look to our prayer festival our prayer festival in May has always been planned to happen. Of course, it was planned to happen in our buildings. It was planned to happen both here at Ragnar Road and at the Gospel Hall with all sorts of prayer rooms and events. We can't do that physically, but we're still going to make sure that we use the month of May to really seek God, to really ask him to come and move in our communities, in our nation, in this world, in our situations, our families and our households, to bring back the prodigals. Just ask him to come and move for us. And uh, we're going to use the month of May to do that. So please uh, just stay tuned this week. We're going to release a few snippets this week of the sort of things we're going to be looking to do, some of the topics that we're going to be praying through, uh, and just what God is saying at this moment to us as a church and as, as individuals, as families, and to our communities. So let's just use this month of May to do that, and we're going to be hearing from John later as he prepares us for that month as we move forward in prayer together as a church. Some great things happening, of course, this week today. After this meeting, uh, for the first time, our youth and children's groups are going to be meeting. Our kids on Sunday group and our hangout groups are going to be meeting. We've got Advance, we've got Amaze, we've got Hangout and Excite. Information's already been given out this week about that, so please pray for that. If you're not involved in those groups, but if you are involved, uh, if, you've got pet, uh, pet, if you're a parent or a carer of a child uh, or a young person, you will have received that information. If you haven't and you want to make sure your child and young person is, uh, um, is able to access those groups, then please do email the church office admin at rrcchurch.com or call us on 0121 555 5891 so we can make sure that those children and young people can connect to those meetings and uh, yeah do pray for that happening straight after this service. Tonight at six o'clock we've got church at home and then after church at home at 6 45 we're also going to be having the option if you wish to stay around and have a cup of tea or coffee uh, you have to make it yourself we can't serve it for you uh, you're going to have that chance just to connect together at the end of the service at 6.45 just to chat and uh, yeah just be together. As the, we're missing that aren't we? We're missing those times when we can be together so let's use that time tonight after our church at home service on Zoom at six o'clock. Again the details are in the new sheet. It's great that our explorers group, our parent and toddler group is meeting on Mondays at 11 o'clock via Facebook Live. Again the details of that are in our notice sheet. You need to contact the office uh, to get the, your information to uh, Liz who leads that group and she will then invite you onto that Facebook Live group. So you can be part of our Explorers. Our Explorers group is our parent and toddler group for preschool aged children. So please, if you're a parent and carer with a preschool aged child, and you want to get involved in that with some singing, a uh, story and some general fun, then please do let us know if you want to be part of that. Our life groups are continuing. Our prayer meetings continuing. As I said on Friday, we're launching our prayer festival. So such a great, exciting week ahead for us here at Raglan Road. Just ask you also to consider at the moment to uh, give to the work of Raglan Road here. The work has not stopped. In fact, probably it's increased. Our work is continuing even if the doors of our church are closed in, in our service to the community, in our service to one another, in, in just building up God's kingdom here. So please do consider giving if you can. Up on the screen is going to come some, up in, some instructions. I'm just going to run through those and we're going to leave those there for a little bit before we enter into our time of worship. So if you wish to give to the work of Raglan Road, there's a couple of options at the moment. You can text give RRCC to 70450. That will donate £5 to the work here. Uh, that service uh, is obviously costs £5 for the donation plus one standard rate message and some instructions about marketing etc are on our new sheet so if you do want to give without receiving communications you can text give RRCC no info to the same number 70450 we'll still receive your donation but no further text messages will come from us um, if you're if if after giving that to um, of typing in those words give RRCC to that number uh, Sometimes a message comes up to say we're unable to do that, we're unable to process that. It might be due to a safety buffer on your phone, might be due to a lack of credit, whatever it might be. You will get an option then to, to give in a different way, usually by a debit and credit card, which um, you can do if you wish to do so. Perhaps the most secure way is to give through our bank account and our bank account details are coming up on the screen as well. So please uh, uh, use those details uh, and you can give directly through your mobile banking service or your internet banking service and please consider at this moment uh, giving to the work here at Raglan Road so that we can continue the work that we're doing. I want to thank you for your generosity and support 
And as we leave this information up on the screen in just a few moments, uh, Dave will lead us in a time of praise and worship. Morning everyone, hope you're all going well. Uh, we're going to sing a few songs together now, so I'm going to pray and then we can, we can praise. So Father God, we thank you for this morning. Thank you that your mercies are new every morning. And we, um, we just want to lift up your name this morning and give glory to you. We pray that you will move amongst us during this time and, and speak to our hearts, speak to our minds. In Jesus' name. We are here. 
All of my devotion. Now there's nothing in this world that ever satisfies. Through every trial, my soul will say, No turning back. I've been set free. Christ is enough for me. Christ is enough for me. Everything I need is in you. Everything I need. Christ, my all in all. Joy of my salvation. This hope will never fail Heaven is our home Through every storm My soul will sing Jesus is here So God be the glory Christ I 
Lord, we thank you that you are holy, that there is none like you. And Lord, we pray that as we come before you this morning, that you will just meet with us, Lord. Lord, fill us up and send us out to do your will. We know that at the moment, Lord, it, it's difficult to, to go and do what we'd want to do, but Lord, you're with us and you give us the strength that we need to go. For those that are going to work, Lord, you give them that strength. For those that are stuck at home, you give them that strength. And Lord, just send us out in whatever capacity that may be, even if it's just a friend through a mobile text, through a WhatsApp, through a video call, whatever that is, Lord. We pray that you will just be able to do that. If it's to colleagues, just fill our hearts with your love for them. We pray that you bless this time, bless us in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, good morning, everyone. My name is John, uh, John Grant, and um, it's lovely to be a part of your service today. Um, thank you, Gareth and Beth, for asking me to do this uh, brief video just to encourage you at the start of your, well, in May, as you start your month of prayer. Um, it's an incredibly amazing privilege to be asked to do this. Uh, Raglan Road has a huge, rich heritage of prayer, and um, I know over the years, many people um, from Raglan Road have, have been incredibly influential in regards to encouraging others to pray and uh, I know Richard uh, was heavily involved when I first started gathering church leaders together and obviously Kevin uh, and Gareth and Beth and uh, so it's an honour to be a part of your morning and just to encourage you to continue to pray and to make prayer a real focus over over May. Uh, we're incredible in, in incredibly different times aren't we and uh, I think that's an understatement of the year and hugely challenging in lots of ways. We're all having to adapt uh, and change uh, in order to, to fit the current climate that we're in. And I know prayer continues to be an even more so an important focus for us as we move forward. I believe that we're in a time of reset, that God is wanting to reset us, and also that God is wanting to maybe reset his church and also the world that we live in, in order that we can see God's kingdom come on earth as it is in Smethwick, Sandwell, the UK and the nations. And um, I know last time I came to you, I'd ran. Um, it was a long time ago. It was uh, May the 20th, uh, 2017. I'd run all the way from home as something that I felt was a bit of a prophetic act. Uh, and I was a herald to herald something. And uh, we were launching our Prepare the Way, which was an initiative that Love Sandwell had took on. And we felt God was asking us to do, which was around running. Uh, well, sorry, running. Some did, some cycled, but mainly most people uh, walked the boundary of Sandwell. And that was each area taking up its little allocation and walking around the perimeter of Sandwell. And we did it all together on May the 20th and some churches joined together. And the whole emphasis was about preparing the way of the Lord. As we know, the scripture in Isaiah, Isaiah 40, verse 3 says, a voice of one calling, prepare the way of the Lord in the wilderness. Make a straight highway for our God in the desert. Every valley shall be lifted up and every mountain and hill made low. The uneven ground will become smooth and the rugged land a plain. And the glory of the Lord will be revealed and all humanity together will see it. And uh, it was an incredible achievement uh, just to say that we have walked, prayer walked. Some people prayer cycled, some did a run, but the whole emphasis of that time was saying, Lord, we want to prepare the way for you. We want to look at removing things that will be in the way, removing the clutter in our own lives, but also in our communities where we see so much stuff going on. And we want to prepare the way of the Lord, remove the rough stones, remove the sin, remove the the obstacles, the, the kind of stuff that the enemy has kind of come and infiltrated, infiltrated, I can't even say that word, you know what I mean, come into our areas and uh, have took over in some ways. We want to see everything made clear so that the Lord can come. And um, prayer is an important part of preparing, isn't it? Preparing the way. And everything has been shaken. We live in a time where everything is shaken. As I said earlier, I believe that God is resetting us as people. But also God is resetting and wanting to re-establish something of himself, a new order of God in our communities. And uh, rest is important as well um, in all of what God is doing. And if you look around in this resetting of our lives, 
in our communities. Um, even nature needs rest and resetting. Uh, I know there's a lot of verses in the Old Testament that talk about the fallow fields and I think it was after seven years that a field was left dormant so that it could rest so that once again it could become a place that could be dug over where seeds could be planted and once again be a field full ripe unto harvest interesting analogies that we're using and uh, I know you've probably seen some of the pictures but I know for me at night time I've looked out um, and I'll be taking the dogs out for a walk for my allowed exercise and uh, taking the dogs out and seeing the skies and, and actually seeing the difference that you can see the stars and see uh, the sky looks completely different without pollution. And you've probably seen some of the pictures as well of Venice um, where those, those canals, those areas were completely filthy, dirty with everything that's going on and suddenly you can actually see wildlife, you can see fish, you can see jellyfish in those uh, canals now because of the lack of pollution. Um, and I just wonder, in this time of God resetting, and this been a season of prayer for you coming into May, it's about preparing the land again, saying, God, we want to prepare the way for you. We want to prepare the way. We want to be a part of this turning over the field so that we can allow you, God, to do something new in our midst. We need to be people that understand the times and what God is wanting us to do. What's our response what is God asking of us, the church? What is God asking of Raglan Road at this time? And this whole month of prayer, I really hope it becomes a time of asking, not just, sorry, a time of listening, not just asking that we say, God, what is your plan? How can we pray more effectively? How can we act more effectively as your church scattered at the moment? But actually, how can we be effective in the communities that you've called us to as we pray? And, uh, that whole idea of understanding the times, you've heard this scripture before from the men of Issachar, the men of Issachar, um, Chronicles 12, um, 32, describes a tribe as men, but I obviously believe it's about men and women in today, who have an understanding of the times to know what Israel ought to do. And uh, one of the theologians says it argues that maybe the phrase means people of experience having knowledge of the world they live in. And we need to say, God, help us to be people that understand the time you're in. So when you pray, as you go into your month of prayer, say, God, help us to be people that understand the times you're in. Help us to be able to navigate through. Help us to know what to do and what not to do. God, will you give us wisdom? Will you help us, Lord? And I was just reminded of a scripture um, that um, sprung to mind as well uh, in regards to Samuel. As you know, Samuel was dedicated to the Lord and he lived in the temple um, and he became this incredible prophet but I just love this um, when God is calling Samuel and he thinks it's Eli um, the person who's there who's living in the temple and he thinks it's Eli calling him but no it actually is the Lord but the number of times uh, and then the Lord called Samuel again this is Samuel 3 um, and it's 19 to 20 I think the last part um, Therefore, sorry, the Lord said, uh, called Samuel again a third time, and he got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. Then Eli perceived that the Lord was calling the boy. Therefore Eli said to Samuel, Go lie down, and if he calls you, you shall speak. Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place, and now the Lord came and stood there, calling as before, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, Speak, because your servant is listening. As Samuel grew up, the Lord was with him and let none of his words fall to the ground. Isn't that incredible? Wouldn't we love that, that, uh, that we're so close to God's heart that none of our words fell to the ground. And all Israel knew that Samuel was a trustworthy prophet from the Lord. And I know you have many prophets and people that are real committed prayers in Raglan Road. And my heart would be that everybody listened to what God was saying through, through your church. That people in the community wanted to know what what do you feel God is saying for this season for this time and allowing God to speak through you that no words fall to the ground but so prayer for me as we look is around preparation so this time of preparation is God I want to be people we want to be a group of people that hear you it isn't just about asking for prayers and seeking God for answers on things or strongholds to be brought down. But it's also about God, let me be people. Let us be a people that listen, like Samuel, that listen. And then say, here, are, here am I, Lord, send me, send me. 
So as I said, God is resetting us and use this season of prayer to say, God, in my own life, what is it that you're wanting to do? The great scripture that we know, if my people will humble themselves and seek my face, I will forgive their sins and I will heal their land. That's John's translation. Sorry, I haven't got that completely right from Chronicles. And, you know, it's about that scripture is aimed at the church or well, the church of the day. If my people, God was calling and um, was talking to us. And it's about us humbling ourselves and going, saying, God, we can't fix this. We can't get this right. But Lord, we want to seek your face. If my people will come before me, I will forgive their sins and I will heal their land. And that's what we want to see take place, isn't it? In Smethwick, in Sandwell, we want to see God's healing of our land. And you know, this whole concept that our prayer is about preparation, preparing the way for God to come. It's also about digging up the soil. As we know, that whole analogy of a plough that comes and digs up. Our whole world has been turned upside down. The soil has been churned. And God is asking us to do that too, saying, will you prepare the land with me? And then also, would you sow? And I really believe that some of the prayer walking that we did, we didn't see instant people falling on their knees and asking God uh, to forgive them for their sins. But it's about sowing. It's about planning. It's about preparation. And ultimately, I really believe that one day, some of the prayer walks that we did three years ago, we'll see, start to see the fruits of our labour that in time that our prayers that were sowed, we might see them come to pass. We might see them grow. Uh, I've just uh, in our garden, we spend a lot of time in the garden at the moment, don't we? But uh, at this point in time, uh, I've been spending loads of time in the garden. We found some old sunflower seeds that we'd kept in some foil from last year. And uh, me and my wife, Lindsay, we decided we'd plant them into some small pots. So we, I got the compost out of our compost bin and we put these seeds in and then I've watered them, Lindsay watered them. And we had this little argument because we saw this little shoot coming forward, this small little shoot coming up. And I said, great, look, look, my sunflowers have uh, started to grow. And Lindsay straight away says, what, your sunflowers? And of course, then we had this little argument. Well, yeah, of course, it's mine. Mine's the one that's growing. And, uh, you know, we're... It would be great, wouldn't it, that all of our prayer that goes in for this month of May, all of your prayer that you start to see Raglan Road grow drastically, incredibly, that when we do gather, that actually you see an amazing thing that God's done in your midst without you even realising it. But, you know, it's also about recognising that we're, we're about kingdom work. As you know, I do a lot of stuff. I love Sandwell and um, I much just as much feel a part of your congregation genuinely as I do my own uh, Bethel Church in Albury because I believe very much in one church and for some of us we're going to be praying prayers that maybe other Christians other churches will reap and uh, there's a great scripture when when we look at competition and when we look at well you know if we're praying we expect to be able to see or bring in all of the harvest a great scripture in 1 Corinthians uh, 3 um, sorry, I'm reading this off my phone, which isn't always helpful. Um, and this is this whole competition thing. There's a bit of an argument going on here. It said, I planted the seed, Apollos watered it, but God made it grow. So neither he who plants or she or he or she who waters is anything but only God makes the thing grow. So there'll be some of us in our congregation that will be there just to faithfully sow. That's all we'll do. And we might never see the fruit, but other generations to come will. Other people in our communities will. Others are called to water. We're called to water the seed that's been planted. And that seed might have been prayers that were being sowed and prayed over hundreds of years in that community where you're based, in your community where you live. People that have faithfully prayed and prayed and prayed. You might be the ones that water it. But God ultimately in his time, in his season, will see hopefully a mighty harvest. But we have to be faithful. We have to be faithful. So I don't know whether that's been completely about prayer. It's a bit of a mixture, but for you, as you go into your month of prayer in May, my hope and my prayer for you as you do that is that you provide space for God to listen, that you provide God space to talk as you listen, and that you provide God the space to speak, that you will become the men and women of Smethwick that understood the times and knew what to do. And I really hope that God directs your prayers, that as we do a bit of both, we listen, but also we pray into areas that God tells us what to pray into. We'll be people like Samuel 
and say, God, I'm here. I'm your servant. I'm listening. Um, and let's be people that are faithful with what God tells us. I really believe in this whole word of reset. Uh, I know Gareth has talked a lot about this in the past as well. Reset. What a great opportunity we have in huge, challenging circumstances. When ever have we had this opportunity to say, God, reset me. I can't do anything as much as I'd want to. I'm stuck in. I'm having to assess everything I do. I'm having to evaluate everything I do. It's a great opportunity for God to do a work in our lives. So during your month of prayer, whether you're having to do that in isolation or whether you're in, in ones or twos, or if you're prayer walking, allow God to reset you during this time. And for his church, pray. Pray that God does a new work in his church. For leaders, pray for them, for wisdom, that they might know how to how to readjust as we do come back together at some point. I, d I really don't think we're going to be ever be the same. And we either allow God to do a new work in us or we go back into an old rut. And I believe that God is ploughing fields. God is in the process of ploughing fields and he's saying, will you be a part of it? Will you come and hear my voice? Will you come and pray? Will you, plow, will you plant seeds into the new furrows? So I just want to... Um, Pray God's blessing over you and encourage you, you know, during this time as well, be praying for opportunities, opportunities to to pray for people. I've never known people be so open as they are at this point in time. It's like as a window. Um, just give you a very quick story. Um, while we were still at work at Crunch, which is a charity that works with young people, Lindsay, my wife, works there. And the lady who um, runs the photocopying company that we, we rent off, <laughs> excuse me, hay fever, I've got the window open. Um, the, the lady who, who runs that and coordinates that phones up Lindsay to just check if everything was okay with a photocopy and ended up just sharing how f afraid she was and how scared she was because of this epidemic. And Lindsay was able just to talk to her very easily, very naturally, and just share the hope that we have in God in the midst of all of this hopelessness that God is in control and he understands how she feels. And I hope and pray that for each one of you here. Each one of you here this morning, it's listening in your living room. Hopefully you haven't switched me off by now, but hopefully that you allow God to use you, that you say, here I am, God, I'm available for you. During this season of prayer, if, if God puts people on your mind, pray for them. Say, God, give me an opportunity to share my faith today, this week, with someone on the phone, with someone who's trying to sell you something that you don't want. I'm still getting quite a few of those, you know. Use that as an opportunity to pray for them. Pray for your neighbour. Pray for your street. Pray for the church. And pray that God's kingdom comes on earth as it is in heaven. So bless you. Um, I really hope that's been useful. I feel humbled to be um, having to... Well, I've been asked to do this for you guys, um, as you're already incredibly uh, great mm -hmm. at praying. But um, I think the important thing is hearing God. Use this space to hear from God and prepare the way of the Lord. Thank you all. God bless you. I hope some of that made sense. And um, yeah, I hope to come and see some of you soon. That'd be great. God bless you. Bye-bye. Thank you, John, for bringing that word to us. Uh, a real pleasure to hear you and to be challenged by the words you've said and to uh, respond to those as well. So can we just pray together and finish our meeting with a word of prayer as we respond to the things that John has said. Lord, we seek to prepare a way for you, Lord, right now that you will help us Clear away for you in our lives, that we'll make space for you to move in our hearts, to move in our families, that you would help prodigals return. That in our streets, the oppressed and the hurting will find a way to freedom, a way to hope. That in our nations, uh, justice will flow like a river into our governments, into our businesses, into our workplaces. Lord, pray that you will raise the valleys. Those who now feel that they have no hope, that you will raise them in faith. Those exhausted will be raised in renewal. Those who are far away will be restored. That the rough places will be made smooth. The places that are desolate and a wilderness will become like a garden of hope. We pray, Lord, that people will receive the coming King Jesus. And Lord, right now, those watching that don't know you, that don't know Jesus, will know in this moment that salvation has come to their house, to their household, that hope has been restored, that freedom has broken the chains of addictions, that beauty has replaced the ashes of our lives. 
and whether we've just received salvation or we've known it the majority of our lives that all of us would bow the knee all of us would repent and believe all of us would hear that voice in the wilderness that all of us would prepare the way of the Lord Lord, we we pray this prayer festival would open up the paths of freedom and salvation for so many at this time and we ask that Lord you do it in the name of our Lord and our Saviour, our friend and our healer, Jesus Christ. Amen. So thanks for joining us, kids. Thanks, um, young people and children. You're off to your groups now. Join us for church at home tonight at 6pm. The Lord bless you, Lord keep you, Lord cause his face to shine upon you. Amen.